Okay, so you know that feeling, that what if I'm wrong feeling. Oh, yeah. Not like misplaced my keys wrong, but like big time wrong. Like yeah. bet the farm wrong. Yeah, yeah. We're talking life choices. Exactly. And today we're diving into that feeling head first with, well, cryptocurrency. Ah, crypto. Always guaranteed to stir up that feeling right. Right. Specifically, we're looking at the Internet Computer Protocol. Or, as the cool kids say, ICP. The cool kids. And probably also, like, your extremely online uncle. Probably. <gasps> anyway, we've got this fascinating video we're unpacking today. It features a dedicated ICP investor. Like, really dedicated. And he's asking himself that very question. What if I'm wrong about all of this? Bold move. Putting that out there publicly. Right. And it's not just theoretical for this guy. He's all in on ICP, has a whole YouTube channel dedicated to it. His livelihood's tied to it. High stakes. Big time. We're also going to be referencing this article that breaks down his arguments, why he's so invested. It's pretty compelling stuff. Even if it makes you a little uneasy. Especially if it makes you uneasy. That's where the good stuff is. So the article really highlights how this, for this guy, it's not just about, you know, number go up on a screen. It's his platform, his audience, his whole career, all riding on ICP. That's a lot of pressure. No kidding. He even talks about, like, if ICP tanks, he might have to rely on his spouse's income. Which, you know, that's a level of honesty you don't see every day. Real talk. But here's the thing. He doesn't shy away from the fear. He owns it. Like, he sees it as part of the adventure, you know? That's interesting. So it's not just blind faith. He's acknowledging the risk. Yeah. He even compares ICP to, like, the early days of Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. those tech giants that seemed crazy at first. Yeah. He sees a similar kind of revolution happening. A lot of people make those comparisons, though. What makes his reasoning stand out? So he's saying that ICP, just like those giants, it needs more than just the tech. It needs people to use it. Adoption is key. And this is where it gets even more interesting. He's super excited about this feature called Open Chat. Open Chat. Okay, I've heard whispers. It's like, imagine Discord or Telegram, right? But decentralized. Everything happening on the blockchain. Messaging transactions, the whole shebang. Hold on, break that down for me. What does that actually look like? On-chain, what does that even mean for, like, sending a message? Okay, so on-chain basically means everything's recorded and verified on the blockchain. Yeah. So it's transparent. Can't be messed with. Okay, I'm with you so far. But how does that change, like, how I use the platform? Think of it this way. On Discord, if you're, say, crowdfunding something, you probably use a separate platform, right? With open chat, everything happens right there. Contributions, pledges, payouts, all tracked on the blockchain. Huh. So it's less about just messaging and more about building a whole system. Exactly. Communities, economies, all within this blockchain framework. So it's like baking in the decentralization from the ground up. That's a great way to put it. And that ties back into his whole philosophy, right? This yeah. belief in decentralization as like this powerful force for good, giving power back to the people. Okay, I'm starting to see the appeal. But this guy... This investor, he keeps talking about being wrong. Is that just like humility? That's what's so interesting. He seems to actually see value in the possibility of being wrong. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. Tell me more. He tells this story about how he underestimated a hurricane once. Thought it wouldn't be that bad. Everyone's got a hurricane story. Right. But this one, it totally changed his outlook. Because he was wrong. And he learned from it. Oh, I see where you're going with this. He connects that experience to ICP. He realized that being wrong about the hurricane, it was scary, sure, but he learned a lot about uncertainty, about rolling with the punches. And he sees that same principle applying to, well, everything, not just hurricanes. Which makes sense, right? Life throws curveballs. It's not about always being right. It's about adapting. Exactly. And he applies that to ICP directly. So it's like, even if he's wrong about ICP, the experience itself is valuable. Yeah. It's about the journey, the learning curve, all of that. Yeah. And this is where his whole approach to ICP gets really fascinating. You mentioned he uses it every day, right? Like really lives in that world. Oh, yeah. He's constantly talking about using ICP and open chat daily. It's not just an investment for him. It's integrated into his life. See, that's what gets me. That hands-on experience, it lends a different kind of weight to his conviction, you know? Absolutely. He stresses that he's not just watching from the sidelines. He's in the trenches, using the tech, seeing how it works firsthand. And that's what feeds his belief in ICP. It's like, I love reading about cooking, but it's not the same as actually, you know, baking bread. Right. He's not just reading the recipe. He's baking the dang cake every day. And experimenting, refining his process, all that. Yeah. But here's the thing. 
he doesn't expect everyone to just follow him blindly. He's not trying to build like an ICP army. No, he actually encourages people to do their own research, to form their own opinions, even if they contradict his own. Which is kind of refreshing, honestly. Yeah. Especially in the crypto space, it can get a little, shall we say, intense. Yeah, people get really attached to their coins, but he's like, hey, think for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. He's more about building a community, right? It's shared exploration. Exactly. It's about the collective journey, the ups and downs, the learning process. And he welcomes that. Which brings us back to being wrong. Mm. He doesn't just accept it. He sees it as essential. It's all part of the process. And honestly, that's a good lesson for anything, right? Not just crypto. Totally. So we've talked about his personal journey, his experience using ICP, mm. his open invitation for others to explore it. But let's go back to this open chat thing for a second, specifically the fact that it's on chain. We talked about how that works, but I'm curious about the why. He seems to think this is a game changer for online communities. Okay, so imagine you're passionate about something, let's say uh, restoring vintage radios. Okay, I'm following. And you want to find other people who are into that, build a community. So you join some forums, maybe a Facebook group. Right, but then what if you wanted to like crowdfund a project together or organize a meetup? You probably need different platforms for each of those things. Exactly. It gets messy. But with open chat, because it's all on chain, all of that can happen seamlessly within the ICP ecosystem. So instead of a bunch of separate apps and websites, it's all in one place. Yeah. And because it's on the blockchain, it's transparent, yeah. secure. You can trust that the money's going where it's supposed to, that the information's accurate. And it all ties back into that decentralization idea. Right. It's about putting the power back in the hands of the users, giving them more control, more ownership over their online interactions. We talked about how that works, but I'm curious about the why. He seems to think this is a game changer for online communities. Okay, so imagine you're passionate about something. Let's say uh, restoring vintage radios. Okay, I'm following. And you want to find other people who are into that build a community. So you join some forums, maybe a Facebook group. Right. But then what if you wanted to like crowdfund a project together or organize a meetup? You'd probably need different platforms for each of those things. Exactly. It gets messy. But with open chat, because it's all on chain, all of that can happen seamlessly within the ICP ecosystem. So instead of a bunch of separate apps and websites, it's all in one place. Yeah. And because it's on the blockchain, it's transparent, secure. You can trust that the money's going where it's supposed to, that the information's accurate. And it all ties back into that decentralization idea. Right. It's about putting the power back in the hands of the users, giving them more control, more ownership over their online interactions. It's a powerful vision, and it certainly gets you thinking about the future of online communities. But it also begs the question, what if he's right? What if this vision of a decentralized internet, where platforms like OpenChat become the norm, actually comes to fruition? It would fundamentally change the way we interact online. Imagine a world where social media platforms, online marketplaces, even entire economies operate on decentralized, transparent blockchains. It could be a profound shift, empowering individuals, fostering collaboration, and potentially disrupting the dominance of centralized tech giants. It's almost like the Wild West of the Internet all over again. But this time, the pioneers are armed with blockchain technology and a vision for a more equitable and user-centric digital landscape. And just like the Wild West, there are bound to be challenges, unexpected turns, and yes, even moments where we get it wrong. But that's part of the excitement, isn't it? Exploring uncharted territory, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and embracing the uncertainty that comes with being at the forefront of a technological revolution. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of ICP, decentralized communities, and the courage it takes to be wrong, what's the key takeaway you hope listeners walk away with? I think this investor story reminds us that it's okay to be passionate, to be deeply invested in something you believe in, even if it comes with the risk of being wrong. It's about being open to new possibilities, challenging our assumptions, and recognizing that the most exciting discoveries often lie just beyond our comfort zones. It's about embracing the journey, learning from our mistakes, and never losing sight of the bigger picture. Exactly. And who knows, maybe someday we'll look back on these early days of blockchain technology as the moment when the internet, as we knew it, began to change forever. Thanks for diving in with us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep an open mind.